I uh, moved to LA to get into the, the makeup effects industry. Uh, this was a time when the movie The Thing had come out uh, already, uh, American World in London, The Howling, these were huge uh, innovations in makeup effects. I was lucky enough to get in with Stan Winston Studios when I first got here and worked for him for a few months. I went to Rick Baker's to, as a sculptor for Harry and the Hendersons. And I think it wasn't until shortly after that uh, I met Eddie. He was, what, 17? And I was, you know, I was introduced to him, like, oh, here's this, this kid, he's really amazing, he's really talented, and, you know, wanted to meet you. So I met with him, and instantly we hit it off. Yeah, we've been friends ever since, and he taught me. Steve had this completely unique way of doing things. At the time, everything was kind of humanoid, it was kind of what we call kind of a safe design, it was... Uh, monster stew Monster paint stew job. paint jobs, purples, fleshy tones, everything was kind of done in a very kind of boring fashion and then Steve shows up the Monster Maker contest with this uh, hermit crab inspired sea creature amphibian paint job with this samurai kilt underneath. Everybody was like, oh my god, it's, it's beautiful, it's designed well, it's something we've never seen before, it hit all those elements. Everything we did in the industry was started with clay. We do maquettes, we just, you know, until our final product's always done in clay. And since I slowly moved out of the makeup effects arena and started getting more into creating statues with video games, you know, the first one I did was for Blizzard back in 2004. And it wasn't until 2010 they came to me and they had this giant robot guy named Jim Rayner, a guy in a robot suit. And he, they showed me the 3D model and said, we want you to make this. And at that point, it was totally different than what I've done before. Before, it was, everything was done traditionally. And now I've got this giant robot. And so that's the first time I really got into, into digital. Digital printing is a huge part of what we do now. Digital printing is obviously catching on. It, it was something relatively new a few years ago, and now it's, it's everywhere. Everybody. Every studio has a 3D printer and is doing stuff because it just makes so much more sense. It's so much easier and it's one-to-one. -one. You design stuff in the computer digitally and you get exactly what you want. The first printer we ever bought was a MakerBot, but it was too small and we needed something bigger. We needed solutions. So we started researching into larger printers and we looked at every company. I think we were on a tour of Blizzard Studios when Brian Face said, oh, you should look into Race 3D. I'm like, oh, what is that? And the first time I heard of it. And uh, sure enough, we contacted John um, over at Race 3D. He had a printer here ASAP, rolled it out of the truck, plugged it in, showed us, and that was pretty much history. You know, with the Race 3D, obviously a bigger build space, faster, uh, and also a higher resolution. But we're able to actually, for the most part, take some of the parts that we've done for the big life-size statues print them, take them to the back, clean them up, and do our regular finishing on them. And you really can't tell the difference between that and the parts that we, we actually farm out to the big printing companies. Yeah, and you do one job and it pays for the printer. Oh yeah, price. That, that was a huge thing. Because the, the ones we were looking at were two, three times more than a Race 3D printer. And then when the Race 3D printer, okay, how much does this cost? And we like, okay, so I guess this is a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, know? we'll buy two. Exactly. <laughs> So we were going to buy one, but we were able to afford two of them, so that was a huge, huge advantage that Race 3D has, and, and since then, um, recommended to so many people, and, and that, that spread on. As artists and being creative every day, we think of unique ways of utilizing this technology and the machinery, and we can do things that we've never done before. 